May God bless you all. In today's sharing, we're going to continue to delve deeper into the topic of the Christian unity. A very actual topic indeed. The Catechism of the Catholic Church also gives us an indication for the content of these things. The Church has gathered and summarized the essential of what the Lord has given us in Revelation in the creed called Nicenio Constantinopolitan, which draws its great authority from the fact that it stems from the first two ecumenical councils in 325 and 381. The Catechism specifies that this symbol remains common to all the great churches of both East and West to this day. Hence, in this symbol are found the truths of the faith, which Christians can profess and witness together, so that the world will believe, manifesting with the desire and commitment to overcome existing differences, the will to walk toward full communion, the unity of the body of Christ. The celebration of the week of prayer for Christian unity leads us to consider other important aspects for ecumenism, above all, the great progress made in relations between churches and ecclesial communities after the Edinburgh Conference of a century ago. The modern ecumenical movement has developed so significantly that over the last century it has become an important element in the life of the church, recalling the problem of union among all Christians and also supporting the growth of communion among them. This not only favors fraternal relations between the churches and ecclesial communities in response to the commandment of love, but it also stimulates theological research. Moreover, it involves the concrete life of the churches and of the ecclesial communities with topics that touch upon pastoral care and the sacramental life, as for example the mutual recognition of baptism the issues relating to mixed marriages, the partial cases of comunicatio in sacris in well-defined particular situations. In the wake of this ecumenical spirit, contacts have spread also to Pentecostal, Evangelic, Evangelical and Charismatic movements for greater reciprocal knowledge, though serious problems are not lacking in this sector. Since Vatican II and thereafter, the Catholic Church has entered into fraternal relations with all the churches of the East and the ecclesial communities of the West, organizing, in particular, with the majority of them, bilateral theological dialogues which have led to the finding of convergences and even consensus on several points, thus deepening the bonds of communion. In the year 2009, these dialogues have achieved positive steps. With the Orthodox Churches, the Mixed International Commission for Theological Dialogue has begun in the 11th plenary session held in Paphos, Cyprus, in October of 2009. The study of a crucial point, a crucial topic, in the dialogue between Catholics and Orthodox the role of the Bishop of Rome in the communion of the Church in the first millennium, that is to say, at the time in which Christians of the East and West lived in full communion. This study will be extended later to the second millennium. Pope Benedict XVI has already asked Catholics many times for prayer for this delicate and essential dialogue for the whole ecumenical movement. Also, with the ancient Orthodox churches of the East, Coptic, Ethiopian, Syrian, Armenian, the similar mixed commission met from the 26th to the 30th of January of last year. These important initiatives attest that at present there is a profound dialogue rich in hopes with all the churches of the East not in full communion with Rome, in their own specificity. Examined during last year with the ecclesial communities of the West, 
were the results reached in the different dialogues over the past 40 years, reflecting in particular on those held with the Anglican Communion, with the World Lutheran Federation, with the World Alliance of Reformed Churches, and with the World Methodist Council. In this regard, the Pontifical Council for Promoting Christian Unity made a study to see the points of conversion of convergence that have reached have been reached in the respective bilateral dialogues and to point out at the same time the remaining problems about which a new phase of meeting will have to be initiated among the recent events one could mention is the commemoration of the 10th anniversary of the joint declaration on the doctrine of justification celebrated by Catholics and Lutherans together on October 31, 2009. To stimulate the continuation of dialogue, as well as the visit to Rome of the Archbishop of Canterbury, Dr. Rowan Williams, who has also held conversations on the particular situation in which the Anglican Communion finds itself, the, com the common commitment to continue relations and dialogue are a positive sign which manifests how intense the desire for unity is, despite all the problems that oppose it. Thus we see that there is a dimension of our responsibility to do everything possible to really attain unity, but that there is another dimension, that of divine action, because only God can give unity to the Church. A self-made unity would be human, but we want the Church of God made by God, who, when he wishes and when we are prepared, will create unity. We must also keep in mind the real progress reached in collaboration and fraternity in all these years, and in these last 50 years. At the same time, we must know that the ecumenical endeavor is not a lineal process. In fact, all problems born in the context of another time lose their weight while in the present context new problems and new difficulties arise. Therefore, we must always be ready for a process of purification in which the Lord will make us capable of being united. So, my dear brothers and sisters, because of the complex ecumenical reality, because of the promotion of dialogue, and also so that Christians of our time can give a new common witness of fidelity to Christ before this world of ours. Let us pray for the unity of the Church. May the Lord hear our invocation and that of all Christians, which in this week is raised to Him with particular intensity. Father God, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' blood, and the Holy Spirit, we kindly ask you to draw all those who believe that your Son is Lord and Savior into one sheepfold. Help us to get together through your word, so that through your word we recognize more who we are through the baptism we have received. And through that we become more and more one in you. We ask this, Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' blood, in the Holy Spirit. And let us ask today also the maternal intercession of Mary, the Mother of God, and the Mother of every Christian believer, so that through her intercession, all Christians become one, because they do what Jesus tells us to do. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. And may God Almighty bless you and protect you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.